Welcome back to the Happy Even After podcast. I am here today with Wendy Jones, and let me introduce her. Wendy is a storyteller, optimism and resilience coach, and founder of the Optimist Journal and author of the book, 365 Days of Optimism. She's also a mother of four, and she got divorced after 20 years of marriage. And at that point, she decided to change the conversation she was having with herself. And from that moment, it it grew her, really her passion, right? And your kind of life purpose. So welcome, Wendy. Thank you so much for having me. So where did the Optimist Journal come from? What made you start writing that? Well, I think originally it came from my i've always been a writer but just to myself so journaling was always a way that i kind of sorted out my thoughts and um when i went through my divorce i really found myself looking back at patterns and kind of you know you're sitting there going how did i get here Mm. and looking back even into the generations past in my family and wondering you know if people told their stories more would we understand why we are the way we are and who we are So I figured, you know, if I couldn't find a journal from the past, I could at least create one for the future. And um, so a lot of the stuff I write about is just kind of my insight on the everyday stories of my life and hoping that, you know, whether my kids read them today or in the future, you know, they'll have something to look back on and go, oh, this was what my mom was thinking, you know. So that was that was my original intent. And then, you know, the more you talk to people, you you realize that you know, when we're honest about our stories, you, it helps you let go of the shame and the, the guilt and all of the things that we feel that are natural human emotions, but they're not any way to live. So, you know, you got to work through that. And as I told my story, I just really formed connections with people that resonated with it. And it's the best feeling in the world. So, and, and I think that's what it's all about is that connection. And we're, sometimes we're so we're so engrossed in our phones and you know whatever else is going on on the screen that we forget just to connect and everyone has a story to to tell right absolutely and i think we're seeing that so so much um you know this with all of the platforms we have to put our stories out on it can actually be so overwhelming and so many of my favorite the, my favorite moments in life are a good one-on-one connection. I love doing even, you know, interviews and, and conversations like this because I just love to sit and talk about what's real and, you know, skip the small talk and, and get into the, the stories of people's lives. And I think we do that beautifully one-on-one. And sometimes, we, you know, there is too much noise, you know, and right now I'm, I'm seeing a lot of beautiful things come through on social media, but, you know, I, it's so important for each of us to sit and listen too. So. I'm happy to be part of that conversation. So let's talk about then your story with your divorce, because 20 years of marriage is a long time and and you reached a point where it's almost like a kind of a starting over moment, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, It's, I'm thankful that my kids are the ages that they are because the, the hardest thing to go through a divorce is it's hard on yourself, but it's, immensely hard to watch what it you know the impact it has on your family and your children and um for me it's just been a real exercise in honesty and not in oversharing but in in helping them walk through it and you know just learning to be really honest about the patterns that life can create and helping them see you know how a journey to self-awareness can really help you I don't look at anything anymore as a mistake. I look at everything as a growth opportunity. And, you know, that mindset flip is a really big deal, I think, when you're going through a divorce. And, you know, when you have children to look at, it's pretty hard to look at anything as a mistake because I always say I have them and I wouldn't have them if I didn't have my marriage. So, you know, that's the forever silver lining for sure. But I do think that our, our, we set ourselves up and, and not know if, if we don't know ourselves really well, and then we don't grow together as a couple, you do hit a point where, you know, every, I needed to grow and things happen and, you know, you can, you can 
say it's someone's fault. It take you know, marriage takes two. It's not about a blame. It's all about forgiveness at this point. And for me, that's been absolutely freeing. So. And that's okay too, to reach a point to say, you know what, we aren't able to grow together anymore. It doesn't erase the history that you've had. Right. And, and there, 20 years is a long time. And, you know, there are a lot of stories that go into that. There were a lot of good times. I mean, yeah. you just, you don't have to forget all of those, the good things. But I do think that as human beings, we're called to grow. And there's something about midlife that you get to this point where if it's in you and you are really feeling that call, you can't ignore it. You know, it's, it, it'll, I'm convinced it'll kill you. You know, the yeah. stress, the things that have left my body and just my overloaded nervous system from trying to hold everything together and keep, keep things a certain way because of an image I thought I had to uphold mm -hmm. is just, it's just no way to live, you know? So you talk about mindset. Was there a particular moment that the switch kind of flipped or was it a progression? You know, I think self-awareness is a really, is a progression for sure, but I definitely started seeking out uh, different conversations than the ones that were going on in my house and in the everyday. I, I have always, I was an athlete, so I, I know kind of how to buckle down in a moment, but just as far as like letting it all out and stringing those moments together, I started seeking out content that would help me um, do that. So one of my absolute leading favorite podcasts is Finding Mastery. Um, it's uh, led by, or it's, it's a sports psychologist, his name's Michael Gervais, and, and it, he just interviews top performers and gets into their mindsets and how you know, they structure their days and how their, you know, their life stories. And I got so much out of that that it really just started to shift my perspective into an absolute growth mindset. And just understanding that difference between life is happening to you or you are creating your life, you know? And I'm just such a big believer in we're creating our own lives. And if you get stuck in that life is just happening to me mode, you know, life gets pretty small, you know, right. and very, very, I don't know, that's just not the picture I see for myself, so. Right. And so for someone who doesn't understand what a growth mindset is, can you explain that? Sure. Um, growth mindset is, is the gist of it is that you see every challenge that you encounter in your life as an opportunity to grow. And, um, you know, there's no life that's not full of change. There's no life without struggle. But the, through those struggles, that's where we start to see where our strengths come through and our strengths get even stronger. So, you know, I've been a really, I've, I've studied a lot of, of that over the last, say, five years. And um, I understand how my brain works now. I understand that I have a negativity bias, that our brains are <laughs> functioning to protect us. And I think we all do, right? Exactly. And that's, that's the human brain. But, you know, it, it helps when you understand that your brain is going to naturally show you the negative first then you actually, and you realize you have to strive to see their strengths and your positives and how those things can project out into the world. It, it you know, just makes you conscious of, of the work that you're doing on yourself, so. Right, uh, Gabby Bernstein has what she calls the choose again method, which is I think exactly what you're saying. And it's like when you have that negative thought, you recognize it, acknowledge it, and then send it on its way and then choose the next positive thought that you can have. It, it almost becomes habit if you do it enough. It does. It's such a game of consistency mm -hmm. and, and learning how to train that and feeling that space between the thought and the reaction. And right. that comes with the mindfulness practice. That's another thing I definitely, I've added to my day of, over the last five, five years is just that, you know, mindful meditation and just realizing that we don't have to respond to everything that comes across our, our you know, to our door. Right. So, and that is um, especially helpful with co-parenting. So yeah. <laughs> I tell clients, you don't have to show up to every fight you're invited to, you know, that you is, get, to, you get to choose. Yes. And knowing like when to re realize when you've been triggered or when you're feeling uh -huh. unsafe or 
you know, if there, if you can take that pause in the moment and just go, wait, hold on, this doesn't need to be responded to right away. It's that moment of, of settling back into yourself that will give you the clarity of how to, how to respond right. rather than reacting. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And so much yeah. of it is just being aware of what sets you off and being aware yeah. of, you know, mm -hmm. so I had a moment last week where I was just in like a really bad mood. And so my husband, who knows I kind of do like the choose again, and he's like, well, choose again. And I'm like, no, I don't want to. Like, I want to sit in this bad mood for, for like an hour. Just let me be. Yeah. But it was this moment of like, I truly like acknowledged and knew, like I could choose to not be in this moment, but <laughs> for that time. <laughs> You're like, but right now it's working for me. <laughs> it's working for me. <laughs> So you talk about um, generational patterns, and I think that this is such an important um, topic and point. Can you speak a little bit to that? Yeah, you know, um, I think it's so interesting to really, to have a full appreciation of what our families bring to us, I think, and kind of a compassion for what the human experience is. You know, we... Our, our families come with stories and they're, they're fabulous ones and great achievements and all of these things, but they're also, you know, the darker ones that are the, the roots that have roots in addiction and, you know, numbing ourselves because we don't want to feel the pain that of, of things that have come through. And, you know, I definitely have those patterns in my family and it led to when I examined my relationship, it was a very codependent one. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm really working hard to help my kids identify what a healthy relationship looks like. And, you know, that's not to say I don't place any blame on anybody. And I think when we talk about generational pain, it's so important not to say like, you did this to me, or it's your fault. I'm like this. It's just an acknowledgement of if something painful happens in your family in the past, and that pain isn't resolved, it, it's carried on generation after generation. Mm. So my family has roots in addiction on, you know, and, and as does um, my kids, like their father's family, you know, roots in addiction and there, there are suicides, there are some really difficult things that are hard to talk about. Um, and to me, that's that shame coming up when people don't want to talk about it and not acknowledging the really difficult side of life. It keeps that shame just, it keeps us living in that frequency of, of where we don't want to share our stories. And then the next generations don't know how they come up into these patterns of codependency because we're looking to someone else to solve our pain. And, you know, in the end, we are the only ones who can make ourselves whole and then we get to add to that yeah so you know i really would love to help people understand that there's it's not a blame game you know it's just a real pattern of it's 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 loving compassion and and knowing how to help but also knowing if we can only acknowledge you know we can only solve the the hurts that we're willing to acknowledge and if people aren't ready to acknowledge those things, you know, to me, that doesn't take away my, I know what's impacted my life. And so my story then becomes my story. And, you know, you have to let other people deal however they feel is best for them. How do you start having those conversations with your children? Because the, I imagine they are uncomfortable because you're kind of spotlighting maybe something that's not so attractive. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because in the beginning, it, it's really hard to, I had a situation where I, I kept things really pulled together. So I think if there's something that I could say, there was a regret of the way that my marriage kind of fell apart, it really wasn't in front of my kids' eyes. So I do feel like there was a, you know, we ripped the bandaid off because I held, you know, there I, I held so much in. And um, so really I started out when we split, just knowing I can't, I can't keep doing that. Right. So I do think as life goes on, you know, you know how they always say like, it's not a matter of, of, of bad mouthing. 
I, I never, I, I, I want my kids to have the best relationship with their dad as possible. He loves them and I want them, mm -hmm. you know, I want that relationship for them. But I do think that, you know, you can let people be who they are and the patterns do show up. Right. So while I'm fighting my pattern of codependency and like, I'm not, I'm not doing that again, mm. but it's, it's an active, it's an active fight. You know, it's, yeah. it's something that I'm very immersed in and I check myself and I, you know, when people have, they're just patterns in life that show up and you'll notice as your kids get older that they, they come to you and they ask questions. And as they ask questions, you know, you have to decide what's age appropriate. I have one, my oldest is almost 20. So it's like very much like having a conversation with an adult because right. she sees patterns and, you know, that's part of also writing, you know, I, I write about things that are sometimes hard to say and for kids to be able to read something and have it, you know, I'll send my kids an email and it sounds impersonal, but I think it's also good to let, give them time to digest and not feel like they have to have something to say back or if they're going to be uncomfortable like give them that space to you know let it sit because there are tears and there are it, it is it's hard but and, and i think the lesson is what you're doing is bringing it to the surface when you know i and it resonates me with me when you said you kind of kept it all in because that's sort of how i function too i'm very yeah. similar that i have to like force force things out into the open but it's almost if you don't do that that's when you become sick that's when you know it's so true and i can't explain enough i'm so thankful like i said because i i do have a really good connection with my body from being an athlete that i cannot believe the the tension that has left my body that the like i can I function so much better. I am so much calmer. I'm calmer for my kids. I, I, I know that feeling of being on edge and I don't have it anymore. But because I, you know, it's just taking those little steps of, you know, setting a morning routine, getting good sleep, getting outside in the morning and, and letting yourself, it's all the little things that add up to a healthy you. And they're simple, simple things. It's not about like the big trips and the, there was so much fanfare to my other life and you know especially through this um covid and staying at home it's like wow boiling it back down to the simple things which i knew before and i've even taken another step and just said there's just so much out there that we add on that can complicate right. relationships and adds that stress to our life that it's it's not really you know kids just want to feel safe and loved and that's it you know we build and, from there. And so you talk about finding flow in your life. Is this what, what this means? Yes. It's so much about unencumbering your mind and just finding that spot where you feel where you are the most yourself and you, you know how to work through a struggle because we also don't find flow until we know how to work through struggle. If we struggle against something and then all of a sudden we just turn away and pivot and go do something else because we don't like that feeling of struggle, we never find flow. Mm -hmm. So we have to work through the struggles in our lives to find that place that's our most, most authentic self. And that's where we find that flow and everything falls away. And you're, you know, you're delivering your message and you're living your truth. And I honestly, if everyone's honest with themselves, don't think there's any higher calling, you know, that's what everyone wants to be seen. Everyone wants to connect. Everyone wants to be listened to. Mm. And, you know, I think that's just, that's every relationship that, we have, whether it's with our kids or a spouse or a friend. So what do you think the obstacles are that are preventing that? Because it seems like that flow should be so easy and yet it is so difficult in our lives. Yeah. You know, I think modern life is, is a big, is, is a big block to that because I do think we, we overtax ourselves, you know, with technology and, you know, just being available to everyone at every time and not taking that that space of realizing like even with your own kids like mm -hmm. I, i'm a text away but that you know that time when you don't pick them up and you're three minutes late and they're texting you where are you where are you i mean 
just relax. So I think like we, we, one, we get spread too thin and we are expected to be everything to everybody, right. whether that's work, family, and then you feel like you're never delivering. Mm -hmm. So I think the biggest key to finding that flow um, is just to, to stay present, you know, and like they say, anxiety uh, is rooted in the future and depression is rooted in the past and joy is in the present moment. Mm -hmm. So whenever I start worrying about, oh my gosh, what's going to happen you know, my, my youngest, where's, how's he going to do in school? He, you know, he has his own struggles or what am I going to do when he gets to high school? Or if I think back to, oh, I used to have this, like there's the anxiety, there's the depression. But when I bring it to the present moment, mm. I'm living in my truth. I'm, we have a roof over my head. My kids are, you know, thriving. That's, that's where the joy is. Right. So, you have on your website um, a micro blog. And so as I was getting ready to talk to you today, I got completely lost in the blog because it's so good. Oh, and um, one of the things that you said that really just stood out to me, you said that um, we should approach everything with a beginner's mind. Yeah. And I'm just like, well, wait a second. Like, I want to be an expert in that thing. <laughs> so that is like the opposite of what I would want to do. Can you share like where that comes from and what that means? Yeah, that's a, that's a big pillar of growth mindset too. Um, you know, I think the second that we, and we do want to be experts in our own right, because we feel like we've put our time in and you get to a certain age and like, I've been there, I've done that. But there's a, I think the key to longevity is that is to keep learning and it also keeps us excited and curious and um, you know, curiosity is, is the um, antidote for fear. And we also hit a point in life where things become fearful, right? I mean, we're scared of we, we, everything. We need security and we need a certain lifestyle and we need all these things, but that's that curiosity that keeps you growing and pushing to that next level. And so that beginner's mind will always make you seek out that next topic or pick up that next book or listen to that podcast that has something that you haven't heard before. And then it's cool when you hit something that you're like, oh my gosh, I totally know this stuff. You know? <laughs> and I have those moments where I'm like, wow, I've kind of been on this topic for a while and I get it. And I'm, right. but there's always more to learn. And then I stumble across, and that's what I do love about social media. You come across so many people. I mean, the, the way we, even we connected, you come across so many people that are on a journey that resonates with yours. And then you start learning from them. And you, there's just always something to add. I'm taking a course right now online called The Skill of Stress. And it's all about regulating, you know, work, learning how to regulate and befriend your nervous system, you know? So there's just so much out there. And it makes me so excited that I do approach things like that these days. I love that. And so you're an athlete and as an athlete, I'm sure you were always raised like if your body is healthy, you're healthy, period, end of story. But there's so much more to that. And I know that that's how you feel about it. So um, can you just share a little bit about your thoughts on that and that how health, being healthy is so much more than just your physicality? Yeah, for sure. You're, I mean, that mind body spirit connection is so huge i i'm a really big believer in yoga it was a huge part of my healing after my divorce and um just learning how to calm that monkey mind that's always racing and um mm -hmm. so yoga brought me a long way from being a swimmer and a volleyball player to where it was you know how hard can you hit the ball how fast can you swim the lap to, to be and to you know pushing yourself to that point of exhaustion to knowing how to slow down on a yoga mat and go, wow, when my brain feels like this, mm -hmm. my body performs better. And, you know, so often in life, I'm not a professional, I never was, but it's these athletic habits that have carried me through my life and helped me raise athletes. And I now I have a gym that's a basketball, volleyball, and um, mentality training facility in Southern California. And it's, those are my, my value system. That game of life is kind of the way I look at it. The things I learned in sports, I carry into my life. But what I've learned about how my body connects to my mind and my heart and 
learning how my nervous system reacts like that has made me a better athlete even yeah. as i'm declining physically uh, you know <laughs> compared to what i used to be able to do i i know how to calm my mind i know how to like i still play beach volleyball and i can i can calm myself down in the middle of a point it's it's those things that i didn't know as a younger athlete that were even affecting my game because you have physical game to go off of right i didn't know the mental side you know and then so it's it's been a, it's it's one of my favorite things to train is is just the the young athletic mind and people that want to you know go to that next that next level so and it's so important too for kids to learn that piece of it because i think in, in the way i was raised it was go harder go faster train more <laughs> you know right. not slow down and i i've turned to yoga too and sometimes i'll take stretches of time away from it but when i come back to the mat it's hard like yeah. it's really it takes a number of times in order to shut my brain off like it's yes. still going and you know it, it that's why they call it practice it's so true and and that that mentality of go hard for like it just doesn't last forever it's right. Yes, we have those moments, but the recovery, that time that we take to recover is so key in, you know, making us perform at our best. And you can look at that from a, a, an athlete's perspective where you just take it right out into life and go, you know what? Sleep is important. Downtime is important. Meditation is important. It, it, it recharges our system. It helps us, you know, move things in our brain and like hold on to stories and be more creative and all of those things that you know i never knew until right. i started learning all this stuff so yeah so let's talk about your book um okay. because it's out there in the world and yes. can you share a little bit about um why you wrote it and what's in the, in between the covers what can we yes expect? so um, it's called 365 Days of Optimism, and it's basically a mindfulness routine where you get just one passage a day. It's not really meant to be sit down and read the whole book at once. It's just one passage a day. Most of them, most of the quotes came from my blog um, that I had already started at the time. So I pulled a lot of it from my original writing. And then um, these were kind of, these were the quotes and the mantras that I had to use to get me through the earliest days of my divorce. Like when I was just one foot in front of the other, I had to, you know, you just kept a very simple schedule and let it out. I just didn't have a lot in me, but I knew my optimism that I knew everything was going to get better. These were the, the quotes that got me through it. So um, I, it's just, it's funny because they say you write your first book for yourself and I think it's very true. Mm -hmm. um, I look back at these quotes, I see how, how I've grown past them and now I, th they still resonate with me, but I see how I add on to them in my daily life. Mm -hmm. And my, my microblog is also, I'm taking the quotes from this book and I've started a subscription service called Everyday Optimism. And um, I take a quote from the book and I write a little, microblog about it. It comes with a daily action and a daily way to reframe how you think with an optimist lens. So um, that is just something I'm really big on. They're great. It's great. Like you can use it in a classroom. I have friends that are teachers that use them as conversation starters with their kids. Um, I have a friend who's a coach that she says she reads it to her daughter at night and they talk about the quote. It's been used in some of my yoga classes. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just really good for that mindfulness habit of retraining your brain a little bit at a time. And do you, do you know, I'm going to put you on the spot here. What was the quote for today? The quote for today. Oh, goodness. <laughs> or it could I be yesterday. Write about a, I write them a week ahead of yeah. time. <laughs> All right, you just give I mean? us any quote. <laughs> um, so one of my favorite ones is um, find the water. It absorbs tears better than any tissue ever could. Ooh. And so I have a lot of stories of like, when I just can't hold it in anymore, I go and jump in the water and nobody knows if you need that moment where no one knows you're crying, which I'm, I've become a fan. My kids know now I cry all the time and it's okay. But I've had a lot of moments where I will just go jump in the ocean or jump in the pool and I'll swim it out and the tears come and it's okay. And then it used to like, and sometimes I look back and go, that was hiding my pain. Mm -hmm. But 
you know, it's the water has absorbed a lot of my tears over the years. So oh. I've, I'm pretty connected to that water. Yeah, that's beautiful. And where can we find your book if we want to buy it? Uh, so it's available on my website at um, theoptimistjournal.com. And it's also available on Amazon. All right. And um, what about social media? Can we find you on Instagram as well? Yes, Instagram. I'm at um, optimistsjourn. It's J-O-U-R-N. And um, on Facebook, the, uh, the Optimist Journal. And right. Wendy Jones. Yeah. Perfect. Thank yeah. you so much. Um, everyone should go over to her website, sign up for the, the micro blog because it's really good and you'll probably get lost in it as well. Um, really helpful, useful information and, and so many gems there. So thank you so much, Wendy, for being here and sharing your story and sharing your optimism with us. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. Have a great day. You too.